I'm Antonio Sella, and in this video we are going to discuss simplified equations for what's called the fugoid mode in aircraft dynamics. Basically, we wish to model this kind of gliding in a constant angle or more aggressive stuff such as this deep dive but climbing again in a sort of oscillatory behavior. However, the full model of an airplane needs six degree of freedom, rigid body mechanics, aerodynamics, aeroelasticity. I mean, we may need to study three semesters of flight dynamics or fluid dynamics before fully understanding everything. But in this video, we are aiming to get a good simplistic model that captures in a comprehensible way, the essence of this fugoid gliding. The basic idea will be around carrying out a force balance in an airplane. Lift, weight, drag and engine thrust. Before delving with the details, we'll discuss the fact that we will choose intrinsic coordinates. Why? such choice of coordinates? Well, the intrinsic reference frame is sort the one in which one axis is the direction of movement and then the remaining axes are perpendicular to that direction of movement, the direction of the speed vector. We choose that because it's somehow related to the feeling of the pilot of the aircraft which sees his airplane advance or see some kind of angular rotation. The feeling of the pilot and the feeling of the instruments which are on board the aircraft's body may be better described in these intrinsic coordinates. Okay, they can be equivalently described in inertial coordinate frames, of course, but somehow thrust and drag are tangential forces in the direction of movement at least in a first approximation, and lift is normal to the direction of movement. So we might advise to choose such a reference frame. But of course we have a couple of problems. First, that such a frame is not inertial, so we must be careful when writing the equations of movement because the reference frame accelerates and rotates. This first issue will be dealt with in this video. A second issue is the fact that body frame, the instruments in the aircraft, may not be exactly equal to path frame. The airspeed direction may be the blue arrow, the direction of the velocity of the center of gravity, at least of the relative velocity with respect to the outside air or wind or whatever, and the plane is usually pitched away from that airspeed direction and the difference of those angles is called the angle of incidence and it may change with time for instance in an aggressive maneuver in which the pilot may place himself like this in a fighter jet in order to quickly break or you know this kind of stuff indeed more complex models in flight dynamics do consider that situation. However, we will simplify and assume that the angle between the red and blue lines is constant during my not so aggressive maneuver. So we need to keep track only of the angle of the blue line with respect to the horizontal because the other one will be the same one plus let's say three degrees lift and drag characteristics will depend on such angle of incidence, but we will assume it to be constant in our maneuvers. This will be one of our basic assumptions, in particular the second one here. We will think our maneuver is smooth enough, slow enough, and the plain rigid body dynamics is fast enough so that it aligns almost instantaneously with the 
airspeed, the wind direction, at this fixed angle alpha. So we will assume that the plane behaves like a weather vane. It instantly aligns with the wind and then in a slower maneuver it will move in this kind of two degree of freedom movement, like a point mass, to achieve this gliding. And the third angular degree of freedom will be weather vane like, then 20 times faster than this other movement. So we will neglect the effects of the airplane rotational inertia. This is the key assumption. And of course, we are going to consider planar movement. We are not going to consider lateral dynamics, plane banks left or right. We will just consider longitudinal motion and altitude and pitch rate associated to the path tangent. So we are modeling a two degree of freedom dynamics, understanding the plane as a point mass. Well, the third assumption is that of negligible aircraft length compared to the trajectory curvature radius. Again, smooth maneuvers so that possibly the starting phases of this simulation in these initial loopings will not be described with enough accuracy by the equations we are going to put forward. But OK, on the other hand, the equations will be extremely simple. The equations we are going to derive were first put forward by Nikolai Zhukovsky, a Russian scientist, and later derived in the Western world by Lanchester. These were the pioneers of flight dynamics, trying to understand the stability or instability of aircraft motion. OK, so let's go with the equations. First, let us review the dynamics in the tangent normal coordinate frame there is another video with further detail on these aspects. See the description, but we're going to quickly summarize it. If I am following a trajectory with a given velocity, the direction of the velocity, the unit vector in such direction will be the tangent vector to the trajectory. It will have some orientation with a horizontal line. We will denote it as theta. And if I take the time derivative of this tangent vector, then I get this expression and this minus sinus cosinus vector, I will call it normal left, resulting from turning the tangent vector 90 degrees in the counterclockwise direction. Then dynamics will be based in acceleration equals force divided by mass. So acceleration will be the time derivative of the velocity vector, which is this product. So applying the product rule for derivatives, we can prove this. So this is the acceleration. This will be the tangential acceleration. And this will be the normal acceleration. Well, normal left, OK? This normal acceleration has sign, can be positive or negative. Positive will mean counterclockwise rotation. Negative will be clockwise rotation of the trajectory. So mass times tangential acceleration will be equal to the tangential net force and mass times normal acceleration will be equal to the normal net force. So this will be the dynamics. And the only remaining thing is carrying out this force balance in an aircraft. So we need to balance lift and weight if we had level flight in the vertical direction and thrust and drag in the horizontal direction. But flight will not be always level. In here, for instance, we have a climbing flight path in which the air speed, the speed of the center of gravity, has an angle theta with respect to the horizontal line. Well, in fact, we measure theta like this, as usual. So this plane is somehow a mirror image of our actual reference system. So this will be important when discussing the signs of things. Nevertheless, the tangential net force 
will be the thrust minus drag, which also will be tangential. Lift will be normal. And the weight, which is mass times gravity, of course, will have a tangential component and a normal component. With the reference system we are considering, weight will point down, so the tangential component will be minus mg sinus of theta, and the normal component will be minus mg cosinus of theta. And the weight will be the only force with sinus or cosinus stuff because thrust, lift and drag are 100% normal or tangential. Hence, dividing these equations by mass and substituting the force balance, we'll get this tangential dynamics equation. This is tangential component of weight drag and engine thrust and this will be the normal dynamics equations resulting force divided by mass being this thing the normal component of weight and lift being normal by definition so these two equations will be the equations of movement and they are the main goal of this video recall that we have this angular speed times linear speed, this product of speeds, due to the non-inertial nature of our reference frame. As a remark, if thrust were not perfectly aligned with the tangential airspeed direction, either by construction or because we have thrust vectoring and we can change the direction of the thrust, well, in such a case, we will add some sinus and cosinus of this angle between airspeed and thrust vector. But for simplicity, we will not consider that here. So this will be our dynamics equation. And for convenience, the only remaining thing is dividing by speed to get a normalized state space representation in which derivatives appear alone at the left of the equal sign. And also we will replace some expressions of drag and lift depending on the plane's velocity. And of course, if you look into aerodynamics textbooks, you have lots of stability derivatives, uh, Jacobians of uh, dependence on the lift and drag on many things. But OK, the simplest Roth approximation is that lift is proportional to the square of the speed and so it's drag. So lowercase l times v squared will be lift and then dividing by v we will get this stuff and lowercase d times v squared will be drag. Here it is. So with this manipulation the two equations in the previous slide can be written like this and once we have a solution of v and theta then we can integrate them to obtain a simulation of the trajectory x and y. And this is exactly what we have done here in this MATLAB simulation with a numerical integrator such as ODE45. But OK, the details on the simulation code are omitted for brevity in this video because it's a matter of setting an initial condition and feeding these equations to a numerical integrator. Note that as we are dividing here by the speed, we have a singularity if speed gets close to zero. And apart from that, if we have aggressive maneuvers or movement of control surfaces, these assumptions may cease to hold. But OK, these are the final second order Fugoid dynamics equations, the top two ones. 
which are the goal of this video, so we will conclude. In this video, we have modeled longitudinal flight motion under some assumptions, the most important of which is that the plane is sort of a weather vane that aligns quickly with the airspeed, so we can consider its motion to be the motion of a point mass and doing only force balance and not torque balance. Under those assumptions, we have obtained this fourth order, including position dynamic model of the so-called fugoid dynamics of an aircraft. But of course, this model is a simplification describing the aircraft center of gravity path, but incorporating body frame, changing ang angle of attacks, control surface, and the extra angular degree of freedom with torque balance is of course the next step in aircraft dynamics model complexity that we will not discuss here for brevity. So we end the video here. Thanks for watching.